Good evening. Welcome to ITV News Meridian. Tonight's headlines in the South. Burnt to its shell, a family's thatched cottage devastated in a massive blaze. Rail row, a week of disruption for thousands of commuters across the Thames Valley and the South as workers prepare to go on strike. And food heaven, budding cooks and Michelin star chefs serve up a treat in Brighton. Good evening. Where once a picturesque cottage stood now lies a burnt out shell of a house after a fire gutted it last night. 50 firefighters and specialist crews tackled the blaze at the property in Langrish near Petersfield. Emma Wilkinson has more. Nestled in the Hampshire countryside, this had been a much loved family home for decades. But last night a huge fire ripped through the thatched roof and all but destroyed this cottage. The couple who live here were treated by paramedics, but escaped serious injury. Today their family have come from near and far to do what they can to help. They're obviously very, very shocked, shaken. They've been here 30 odd years. Um, it's their life. It's gutting. I mean, it was like a show home inside, really. They always kept it up to, really up together. As you can see by the hedges and all the topiary in the garden, it's just, uh, yeah, shocking. It's thought Reuben's aunt and uncle were inside when a neighbour came to tell them the roof was on fire. Dozens of firefighters have been working through the night to put it out. This has been a very challenging job for firefighters, not just because this is a thatched cottage, but because rural locations like this don't have very good water supplies. So the crews have needed to bring in huge tankers of water down very narrow roads to try and bring the fire under control. The crews have worked really hard as well as dealing with the fire. They've actually removed uh, most of the belongings from the long-standing family home, so all the furniture, uh, family effects, photographs, as much as possible has been recovered. That has brought some comfort to the family who are struggling to come to terms with what's happened here. It's not yet known exactly what caused this fire, but firefighters are reminding anyone with wood burners or open fires to check their chimneys and their smoke alarms. Emma Wilkinson, ITV News, Langrish. In other news, a man's been charged with attempted murder after a girl was attacked with a hammer in Portsmouth. The 17-year-old was left with serious injuries in the assault on Shearer Road last month. Police have been given extra time to question a 26-year-old man about the murder of a father of four from Southampton. 49-year-old Michael Freshwater was found dead in a flat on Westridge Road on Friday. It's said to be the most disruptive rail strike for 20 years. ITV Meridian can reveal more than half a million rail passengers face a week of severe delays and cancellations. Southern Trains has tonight published the services it plans to run during the walkout. Here's Mike Pearce. With peace talks hitting the buffers, Southern says it has no option but to publish a strike timetable covering four consecutive days from next Tuesday when the next action is due to take place. For many thousands like on parts of the Uckfield line, Chichester to Portsmouth, Lewis to Seaford and Tunbridge to Redhill, there'll be no trains for all four days. Outside the M25, many services will only run between 7.30 in the morning and 6.30 at night. The Brighton line will also see a reduced service. Following the collapse of talks, more strike days could also be called as early as tomorrow or Wednesday. It means more disruption for the travelling public and uh, trains won't be running. It means that our customers will, will suffer now more industrial action almost certainly. Um, and don't forget this industrial action is based on us wanting to improve the service for our customers. That's what it's all about. The RMT say they've been angered because Southern have taken away free travel passes for guards and their families and want them to promise not to strike again to get them back. They've acted very provocatively. They've sent out pro formas to all our members saying that they're going to lose their travel facilities, their children are going to lose their travel facilities, their wives are going to lose their travel facilities, their partners are going to lose those facilities and they're going to lose their car parking permits unless they, they say that they're going to scab and uh, come and they work during further strikes. It's obviously unacceptable. Southern say the move is justified because the guards caused so much disruption. They want drivers to close train doors to allow the conductors to spend more time with passengers and promise no jobs will go and pay will not be cut. 
The RMT say they don't believe it and claim the move will compromise safety. They say they'll escalate the dispute, there could be even more strikes. Well, we really need the RMT to think about that, come back and talk to us again. This strike is totally unnecessary. We don't want any further industrial action. We want to talk to the RMT. But they say they want guards on all trains, or at least staff on all trains. Well, we've been very clear that what we want is an improved level of customer service on trains so that people on the trains are able to make announcements, sell tickets and talk to our customers, move up and down the trains and do that. That's what we want. We're very clear that, um, that, that we've got a way forward to do that. Uh, we just want the RMT to come and talk to us about it. But for now, a settlement is firmly on the slow track. Mike Pierce, ITV News. The wife of a man who's been missing for more than two weeks has made a desperate appeal for help finding him. David Horsford hasn't been seen since he left his home in Poole on the 16th of April. Richard Jones reports. Maggie Horsford and her sister Fran have been distributing posters appealing for David's return since he went missing from home in Hamworthy. She says he had been worried about things and hadn't been sleeping but that his disappearance is completely out of character. He got up and said he fancied a walk, some fresh air, and I said, are you all right? He said, yes, and he went for a walk, and that was the last I saw him. The police and friends of the couple have been searching for David, but so far there have been no sightings. I'd just like it to know he's safe. If he's not ready to come home for whatever reason, that's fine. Just let us know he's safe. And I do hope that there is someone out there looking after him. Since they retired three years ago, the Horsfords have been on a number of holidays. Maggie hopes they'll still be able to take their next, a long planned trip on a steam railway in Scotland. Richard Jones, ITV News. A church in Newbury has reopened its doors to the public following a spate of vandalism. St John's Church is back to its former glory after a group of volunteers decided to step in. The local priest says she's been overwhelmed by the support. Absolutely delighted. It's been really, really lovely. And it's wonderful seeing different people coming in. And also some are saying, well, I've lived here quite near the church for 20 or 30 years, but this is the first time I've been in. And also the delight on the faces of the congregation and people who have volunteered and brewed up cuppers, just saying how lovely it is to feel the, the fresh air blowing in and the sunshine coming in. Now, it may have been typical bank holiday weather today, but that didn't stop budding cooks and Michelin star chefs heading to Hove for the Foodies Festival. We sent Charlotte Wilkins along to sample some of the culinary delights. A feast for the eyes and for the senses. Thousands of people enjoy the mouth-watering delights of the annual foodie festival on Hove Lawns. So we have um, 200 stalls here and we focus on um, local artisan produce. We also work very closely with um, local chefs and restaurants. But in addition to that, um, we bring in um, really great street food and products from all over the country. Buongiorno everyone, good morning, how are you doing today? Among others showcasing their street food venture is celebrity chef Aldo Zilli. Well, on my last trip to Italy, this is where I picked it up and uh, now we're making them here and it's a cross between a pizza and a flatbread and you can fill it with it whatever you want. You know, it, it's lovely to be in the streets and see people and I'm a people's person so it's, I'm just, it's just down my street. <laughs> One of the local chefs taking to the stage to show off their culinary skills is Alan Sperring from the award-winning Brighton restaurant Chili Pickle. For him, the festival is a highlight in the city's calendar. I, I think it's amazing for the profile of Brighton. I mean, over the years, it's really grown as a foodie destination. Um, you know, it's a bunch of chefs and passionate foodie people getting together and really showcasing what the town's all about and then people coming from the outside as well and seeing that Brighton's really got something to offer. Charlotte Wilkins, ITV News, Hove. Oh, it looked good, didn't it? Right, sport now and football. Promotion chasing Brighton scored an injury time equaliser this afternoon against Derby County. The visitors took the lead after 70 minutes and then Brighton's Lewis Dunk was sent off. 
But in the 94th minute, James Wilson scored. The Seagulls go to promotion rivals Middlesbrough on Saturday. Both teams know a win will secure automatic promotion. In sailing, the British Olympic team has picked up four medals in one of the major build-up events in France. Weymouth sailors Hannah Mills and Saskia Clark scooped gold in the 470s. Bryony Shaw, who grew up in Oxford, won silver in the women's RSX, while there was bronze for Weymouth's Nick Dempsey in the men's RSX. OK, weather time now. Here's Philippa Drew. From blizzards to pool, driving through Europe, Eurotunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Hello there. Well, the next few days are set to bring a real taste of spring. Plenty of dry weather, some good sunny spells, and in that sunshine, getting warmer by the day. But for tonight, it's going to be dry and under clear skies, a fairly chilly picture as well. Temperatures just low enough for a touch of ground frost in some rural spots. So tomorrow morning, potentially quite a chilly start, but in the sunny skies, temperatures gradually lifting back into double figures. And for the afternoon, more of the same. Plenty of dry and fine weather, some good sunny spells around, and temperatures hitting around 14 or 15 degrees. And for the next few days, things staying very settled. Plenty more dry weather to come. Some lovely sunny spells, fairly light winds for the most part too. And as I said, by day, those temperatures gradually climbing. 21 by Friday. Eurotunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Keeping a close eye on summer. The Pollen Count, sponsored by Eilergy Eye Drops. So tree pollen season is now in full swing. Moderate levels through tomorrow, rising to high on Wednesday. And in fact, that's where they'll stay for the rest of the working week. Take care. I'll see you very soon. Good night. We're back tomorrow at six. Look forward to seeing you then. Bye bye.